He is the King of all kings. We came into this room because we declare that He was Lord and He's Lord, I know, over my life. God, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 5.13 says that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We didn't come to Tasmania to have a nice service. I drove on a some airplane for like 30 hours <laughs> and I don't tr like to travel <laughs> yeah. I can't wait until we can just go wherever we think <laughs> that, that's the day I'm looking towards But I'm starting with this for a reason. Tonight, we've got to settle in our hearts that God made me righteous through Christ. We can never be good enough. You'll never, ever, ever measure up to the standard of holiness that God is. You can work day and night, night and day. You can look pretty or you can look ugly. However you want to look. To make yourself feel better about yourself. That this thing that says that you don't measure up is a lie. It's always been a lie. This thing that says that to be this certain thing, to be on a stage or, or to have money or whatever it is, all those things are great, but it does not make you better than somebody else. It doesn't make you greater It was why our father, our papa, our daddy, our Abba sent his son so that we don't have any ifs or buts or whys or can'ts. He's, he made you perfect because of Jesus. <laughs> that no longer do we have to thrive and strive to be God's child. We are so loved. We are so adored. <laughs> he looks at you, he goes, I don't know how I did it that good. <laughs> Because most of us don't live out our purpose and destiny in the earth because we're always fighting with ourselves about who we are. And our life becomes a war on trying to decide how am I going to get there when Jesus did it all in one act. He was beaten beyond recognition so that you could become the child of God. 
making it that you can walk to his refrigerator and eat anything in the fridge without asking permission. <laughs> Are you hearing me? That, that he made us in such a way that we became righteous. Righteousness is this. It is being in right standing with God. <laughs> and because of that, that you are in a state of righteousness, God is the only state of being that God can be around. So he made you that so he could live inside of you so that you could do what you're placed on this earth to do. Do you hear me? We came to Tasmania. Listen to me. Tasmania belongs to the Lord. If the people of God says it is. Because God loves Tasmania. Tasmania is in the eyes of God. And I've been hearing lots of words the past four years how God wants Tasmania. We have the Holy Spirit in us. That can raise the dead. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead at the resurrection lives inside of you. Lives, lives inside of this young man right here, right beside the man with the blue shirt. Are these your kids? You need to know he's your dad. And so he's your dad, right? Well, you know what? You act the same way. Papa God. You're my dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you hear what I'm saying? God is our dad. Yeah. I'm really going somewhere. Like right now, if you're in this room, I don't care how old you are. We need to settle this part. You need to know today and get rid of either that orphan spirit or that spirit of performance. Are you hearing me? Off of your life. Because it's killing you. It's, it's making you weak. Listen, sin means missing the mark, right? But I'm going to tell you something. All sin comes from a belief system. <laughs> you have to re ask for forgiveness when you sin, but it's what you believe is what's driving you to sin. And instead of trying to stop your sin, you've got to change your belief, and you won't want to sin. Do I need to say that again? Or does that make sense? Say it again. Your sin needs to be repented of, but you need to go back ask the Lord, what am I believing that is wrong? Because it's not righteous. <laughs> because if you believe like a righteous person, there just is no sin. And God wants to get some people free in this room. If that's you, that you wrestle. Because listen, most people their whole life are in a war about who they are. Instead, the war has always been about why you were born. He, the devil does not want you to discover your purpose. And so he 
throws you these lies so that you don't live out your purpose. <laughs> Man, I ran this Bible school for 25 years. I am the last person on the earth should run a Bible school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's all drink to that. <laughs> that was my problem. <laughs> but God delivered me. And now he, he, he actually thinks I'm gorgeous. He even called me hot once. <laughs> and I'm like, I agreed. Uh, maybe that was my wife. <laughs> okay, let's get people free. On, on this subject, listen to me. You'll never live out your purpose. See, because once you know you're a child of God, you never have to go and do anything or go any looking for who you are. It was settled at the cross. Are you hearing me? That you're lovable, adorable, cheeky. <laughs> Smell like a flower. Like, my wife never stinks. I don't get it. I'm like, you always smell like a flower. I, I don't know how she does it. It's like, probably because she never ever sinned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had to tell her my story. I got to her and she couldn't think of one thing she ever did in her whole life wrong. I'm like, are you saved? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you don't realize, it's, you know, I needed a savior. I knew that. <laughs> but when you ain't never done anything wrong, but she did need a savior because she was born with a sin nature. But when Jesus comes, he takes your sin nature. Amen. And then all you have is a free will to sin. Right now in this room, if you have thoughts like, I don't measure up. I'm not good enough. That I have to change. To believe I'm going to be good enough. If you're in this room and you find yourself working really, really hard. Just to maintain your life then I want you to stand okay who's going to be the first who's going to be the, I know there's people in the room because I can see it on people I see rejection because I had rejection so bad I can see it and when rejection comes out of someone's mouth towards me I can see it coming in slow motion and I just bat it down do you hear me there's only one person standing Okay, uh, that's good. That's all there it is. Come on. It's nothing to be ashamed of. There is no shame in the kingdom. There is no shame. I hear people have murdered someone, all sorts of things. There's no shame in it. You may go to jail. But they'll probably let you out, especially nowadays. Oh my goodness. Mark unhinged. <laughs> okay, close your eyes. I th want you to remember a time when the Lord touched you. Either
spoke to you. It could have been a revelation in his word. It could have been uh, a time you were just alone. I want you to look now. And I want you to ask this question. I want you to be my dad. Come on, put on your lips. No one needs to hear you, but at least put on your lips. I want you to be my dad. I want to know you so deep. Lord, but I have these things that continue to lie to me. And I want to hear from you today to settle this. Do you love me? Or if I believe in a lie. We're going to, because it's, people probably go to work in here, huh? Some people have to work. <laughs> I retired, so I don't have to work anymore. <laughs> Although I'm always working. Oh, we do? Oh, good. You know, um, we're going to be going back into worship in, in a little bit. But the, the Lord meets people. You think about Jacob. Jacob is... is I'll tell this story about Jacob. Jacob's now married. <laughs> and uh, he's rich with cattle and everything. And his brother, who he deceived, although Esau sold his, his destiny on his life for a bowl of soup. So many people sell out their purpose Could you believe that you, you could have been when the, the, you would have been the patriarch of a nation and you sold it out for a lie? That's what we're taught. That's what we, people were standing in the room for. And here's, here's Jacob and his brother's coming to meet him. He think his brother's going to kill him. You know, and so he ends up in a place called Penel. And, and there, the Lord prophesies to him. He prophesies the exact same thing that he prophesied to Abraham. <laughs> and he says that you're going to be a father of many nations, more than the sands of the sea. Come on, Tasmania is going to birth more than the sands of the sea. There's going to be so many births. <clears throat> New births. I need some water. Just give me a minute. You start drinking. <laughs> what I like about Jesus a lot, not only does he love me, but he, 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 he loves to give me drinks of living water. <laughs> I I drink every day. <laughs> you know, I mean Romans five seventeen, you know, don't be drunk with wine, which is democracy. You know, I don't want to be known as a having democracy. It sounds like a disease. <laughs> but he says, be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. That word filled is, oh, if I had a bottle of water and I was filling this one, empty like a lot of people. <laughs> but you ever notice when you get a bottle of water, you're ripped off. There's already some missing. Like some guy who's filling them takes a drink out of every one. <laughs> Makes you feel good. I'm 
having troubles, pray for me. But to be filled has to be up and then flowing over. Yeah. And we're supposed to be living on what's flowing over. If I'm not getting as drunk as a skunk, this is a skunk drink. I bet so, you know what? I'll tell a sin. I thought the devil was from Tasmania. <laughs> it's a cartoon when I was a kid. I'm serious. So then I know I'm going to Tasmania. That's where the devil's from. I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, he, t- he told all of us that we could cast out demons. Come on, yeah. You know? And, uh, heal the sick. So that you're overflowing. um, I'm trying to remember what we came here for. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) But what was the last thing I was saying? The what? Oh, yeah, I did the overflow thing, but I was talking something about that. That was because I was drinking. Oh, Jacob, you're so smart. Oh, man. Just like my mom was. She went to heaven. She's so smart. They just had her, had to take her at 97. So that was, that was good. That was good. Dad went at 90. But, um. You know, my mom had no gray hair at 97. Well, she had a little, like, but if you looked at it, it looked like she had black hair. It's just like, Mom, why don't you turn gray? Shut up. (laughs) That was Mom. (laughs) But, uh, but Jacob, Jacob gets this, you know, God meets us in the most unusual times but he always meets us for a purpose so the, here's Jacob running from his brother and, <laughs> and then God tells him what's your name because he wanted him to hear his name Jacob <laughs> which meant deceiver or surplanter. And he says, no longer. Your name is called Israel, which is called a prince with God. See, God always, listen to me, he always meets us because he wants us to fulfill our purpose more than we do. And he has the ability to make that happen. And tonight, he wants to pull out the very thing that stops you from being the lion that you are. You know, Christ was a lamb, but then he turned into a lion.
You think about Moses in the burning bush. God met him there. That's another, I won't even, they'll just blow you. You, you, you know, the burning bush, it says the angel of the Lord, right? <laughs> well, you don't bow down to angels. Who was it? Yeah. It was, it, it was the pre-incarnate son of God. <laughs> He hadn't taken on flesh yet and came to the earth. <laughs> but it says, that's why you see Moses can see him face to face. Moses goes in the tent, could talk to him face to face. Why? He's talking to Christ. His pre incarnate form. And what does Moses goes from? What did he do? He he was raised in Pharaoh's house, so he knew how to be a king. But once he identified with being a slave, he lived like a slave. Because <laughs> we live what we believe. <laughs> Come on. It's like Adam and Eve in the garden. Who told you you were naked? <laughs> Have you been eating some of that fruit? <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting there. You think Paul murdering? I'm just thinking, I, I, tons. Paul murdering Christians, and God takes them to being what? Saving, making believers out of unbelievers. Come on. We need some believers making themselves into believers because <laughs> they're not believing what God said about them. You hear me? Tasmania is waiting for a people to awake to what? they were born for. Listen to me. Tasmania is needing a people who know God. Who know that they have the cure of all ill. Listen to me. Revival is the cure of all ill. When revival happens, Bars closed down. I'm sad for the Christians who are starting to drink nowadays. Like, what are you going to do when the next revival comes? And if, and that, it was a bad, bad way to go. Because <laughs> a lot of Christians are starting to drink now. I don't get it. You know, but they probably didn't use that problem like I did. But you know what I'm saying? And... <clears throat> How many times have I seen a person change in a moment? I love running school for 25 years because I'd see people change. What took people 10 and 20 and 30 years? Because if we could change, we would do it. <laughs> but when you get under the spout where the glory comes out, <laughs> and never take your mouth off it he's going to change you and you see people actually look different and, and become different and now you know I, I love they're, they're like a family you go in, like they're doing things they're planting churches and they're, they're, they're you know they, they, they know how to cast out demons they, they all pray for the sick they, they do the things that Jesus asked us to do. All just because people around them told them. You, you know what? It's kind of like the prophetic words that were being given. That's who you are. And eventually it got past the lies. 
And those lies tried to come back. And so tonight's an encounter night. So I told you stories about encounter. Like, like we're supposed to be people full of the oil of God. Because the oil, you know, the story about the, like the ten virgins, right? It, it's in Matthew 25. And it's like the Lord tells them, keep your oil lamp full and your, your wick trimmed, right? And five did and five didn't. See, and it, the encounter is what gives you the anointing. Holy Spirit is inside of you. Listen to me. And when you encounter Him, and He changes what you believe because of the encounter, because you encountered the God because He's everything, right? He's what you need. And you don't actually know you, you need it until you have that encounter. He's wanting to meet you. And so when we're having worship, worship means to kiss the sun. Did you know that? It actually means to kiss the sun. Face actually means presence. Moses was in the presence. <laughs> and when, when the glory starts to fill the room because worship is one of the keys the gifts the treats that God gave us see everything flows off of God's word everything like some people would just well, I just want that experience and it's like it's not about that if you didn't have the word it wouldn't be happening <laughs> he, he says in, in Psalms uh it's, oh, I should look it so I'm not, so I don't, but it, I believe it's Psalms 22, verse 3. Someone can look it up real quick, make sure, or it's the next one. Yeah, look at my Bible. But it says that he inhabits the praise of his people. What well, that word means, he sits on the praises of his people. When we start worshiping, he comes there, he's sitting on it. Literally, it's what he's meaning. And so he, he always does what the word says. Are you, you hearing me? Like, you got to consume this thing until you become it. Smith Wigglesworth, I don't know if you know who he is, but a revivalist. And, but he didn't do anything but read the Bible. You can read other books. But, but for him, he was like, you got to know it until you become it. And that's what encounters do. God meets you. And so, so we're talking about the oil, and, and that's the reason I'm talking about that is, see, you're going to have an encounter, right? And, and he's going to tell you who you are, but the way that you stay full of oil is through your relationship with him. <laughs> because I'm having an encounter every day. I do not miss my time with God. Like, you can't have that time. And because of that, I'm keeping my oil of my lamp full so that I can give him away. But if we have nothing to give away, our city, our town, our state remains the same. But if we've got our mouth on the spout where the glory comes out, <laughs> your oil is going to stay full. And you ain't, you know, our, we already went through and ho hope you're getting that like, that thing that tells you that you're not good enough and, and uh, you know, you're a failure or you're not pretty or, you know, or you're not ugly enough or whatever it is, you know. Like, yeah, if I was uglier, I could be in the movies. 
I would never want to be in a movie. I don't even like being up front and having a microphone to tell you the truth. I like, please don't give me a microphone. <laughs> and I, here I am. I had, a, I had a speech impediment growing up. I still don't say words right. And one day I can say a word and the next day I can't. I don't get it. The whole class laughs at me. Everybody. But you know what? I like being laughed at. <laughs> My mom could have called me Sue and but ain't that old Johnny Cash song or something? <laughs> if you want to be tough, name your boy Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Bethany, am I wrecking your meeting? <laughs> you're, you're crying. She's been drinking. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm in your church. If I had another church, I could be kicked out. Maybe I will get kicked out of this one. <laughs> It's a good day when you get kicked out of church. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. I've been kicked out before. Banned. You're banned. And I'm like, I'm banned from church? Oh, my goodness. What will I do? <laughs> I'm going to go straight to the spout. <laughs> <laughs> I have a point in this, in, the, in this whole thing, it, I really do. I wonder what she's doing down there. She is. See, see worship is, is, is a key because Worship, there's a bunch of them that unlocks the glory, but worship is one of them. That when we get together, we worship. It is an act of surrender to the King. Because worship makes you feel good, right? And me, I know what addiction is, because I was an addict. And it's like, you can get addicted to worship, that you keep coming for another high. When it's actually, it's supposed to be unto Him. Where when we come in, we surrender and we enter and we worship. We're not looking for someone to hype me up, pop me up. I hate hype. <laughs> it's, religion's a demon and it's an antichrist spirit. And it's a, it, all it does is, is, is judge and ridicule. <laughs> and it makes people weak. Amen? And so when we come in to worship God, and, and I'm telling that for a reason, as a congregation, when you come together and worship Him, because it says to worship in spirit and truth. That the Father is looking for worshipers in spirit and truth. John chapter 4, the woman at the well. Which is, woman at the well is interesting because, you know, most people understand it as, oh, she went after Jesus ta told her, right? And she told them every, you know, about the man that knew everything about her. But you know what? They actually didn't believe her. They went and they came back and they said, oh, it is true. See, they went and got their own encounter <laughs> by talking to Jesus. The, are you hearing me? An example of what I'm saying. Like we can hear it, but it's until we get an encounter. It, because everyone in this room needs something different. But he's the God of everything. That there's nothing he can't do. <laughs> See, we are living in a defining moment. I, I don't know if you know that or not. 
We're living in, a, in, a, in a, what I call e time. A page has been turned by God in the history books. And things aren't going to be the same. Tenacity has to come upon the church. Please don't let that happen to me. <laughs> Everybody would be thinking bad about me. <laughs> no, we cast the last religious demon out of the last person that left. <laughs> All right. Stop it. I'm talking to me. <laughs> that... And this, the, the funny moment is this, what I'm talking about is, is if you notice that people are just acting weird, believe in, you know, the weirdest things. You like, if there ain't a demon behind that, there is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you don't know what sex you are, there's something wrong with you. I, I'm not being mean or, or making a joke of it. I'm like, we're living in, in a weird time, unusual time, where, where it's a violation against our children. When will the church say it's enough? Because as soon as we say enough, re revival will come. <laughs> it, 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 it can't be to make us feel good. It is to bring the kingdom and glory to the king. In 1957, the stock market crashed. And a man named Jeremiah Lampus, businessman. There's no business. So he started a prayer. And he was hoping somebody would show up as he, he put signs up everywhere. Prayer meeting. Six people finally came to it. And then the next week, it had doubled. Within a very short time, New York City, 50,000 people a week were being saved. Because wow. things were tough with the people, but it was dark times too. And that, that revival, Stockholm, 250,000 people were saved in, in less than a year. Like, when revival comes, it cures evil. <laughs> when, the, when the first Great Awakening happened, I know more about um, what it did in America. I know a lot about w across the world, but yeah. I, I've studied revival history now for the past 30, what, seven, 37 years. That I, I love revival history <laughs> because it, if you know what God's done in the past, you know what He can do on, right now. Because <laughs> people don't believe that it can happen. I hear Christians like, "Hey, that was back then; it can't happen." It's like, "Oh yeah, it, 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 <laughs> oh yeah, it can." When, when. Charles Finney walks into a factory and a lady keeps staring at him so he decides to walk over to her and she just starts weeping and crying 
And then all of a sudden the whole factory, people started going and on and on. Finally the whole thing and uh, it, it, people are crying. Yeah. They're supposed to be, I think it was a, 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 um, a sewing, you know, where you sew things, yeah. And uh, the owner said, let's just have church. <laughs> and so they, they cleaned out this room where, and they just started having church. Wow. Certain time of the day, every day. And it's just like, because the man has been spending time with Jesus, it's like Peter and his shadow. It's not Peter's shadow. <laughs> it's, it's the glory of God yeah. that has come upon his life yeah. for spending so much time with the Lord. Yeah. It's happened many times to many people throughout history. Wow. Many times. <laughs> Tasmania needs a people. Who have surrendered because you can't even become a Christian unless you surrender wow. and the big question is are you in charge of your life or is, is he is, or is he Lord because that question is going to come up on the big day yeah. <laughs> the big day yeah. and it ain't your birthday <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad he loves me, but I'll tell you what, you don't be a bad boy, Mark. I mean, God, God is pulling back because of the time and everything. He's pulling back the cover. I mean, he, he first starts in the church. <laughs> and when this type of thing is, it's better to just come clean before you're on the front page. <laughs> we, you're hearing me. You hear what I'm saying? Like God is, God is moving. And he's looking for people to move through. And we got to decide, am I going to be one that's going to allow God to move through? Because I, I've been so privileged I see people who you would never think could stop the rain, stand on a stage in Mexico, and I hear his voice, Bobby Brown was his name, and it's pouring, I mean buckets of water, and we have all of our equipment covered, and here I hear this voice, do you want to see the rain stop, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Bobby because last year we were on a trip and Bobby's like you know I just want to make the rain I want to just see God because I'm so I just want to see him do this and I'm like Bobby your dream is really big he could do it I guess <laughs> old mark of little faith <laughs> and here we are the next year and it's pouring and Bobby goes do you want to see a miracle and he prays, the rain stops immediately, immediately. A cloud, uh, uh, a hole in the sky opens up, full moon shining down on the stage. People are f on their face in the puddles, repenting. <laughs> we led so many people to the Lord. There is a, a five-story building right there. People are looking out the windows and they're just waving their hands like I want to know the Lord <laughs> like they want to get saved Jesus did listen Jesus did miracles so that people would know he was the Messiah it wasn't just because he loved people he needed people to know so he proved that he was the Messiah when miracles happen it makes people believe it even makes believers who don't believe believers. <laughs> when the person in your church has been blind your whole life and they can see now. I remember this boy, he, he had 
bottle, you know, the, as thick as the bottom of a Coke bottle, like thick glasses on. And he must have been eight, nine years old. And the Lord just touches him in a service. And didn't even pray for him. And he's all of a sudden, I, I could see they had things up around because they used the, the same room for Sunday school. And, and he could see. Like, see, th that's what happens in a wor worshiping church. A church that worship in spirit and truth. Spirit is this. I worship with a, all my heart. <laughs> you, you know, in, in Romans chapter 8, it says that if you walk after the flesh is death, but if you walk after the spirit is life, right? Don't get it. It's, it's not like this brainstorm thing. Well, all that is saying is this. If you make your decisions with him, you're walking in the spirit. You hear me? But if you're not, then you're, you're walking in death. Even though you can call yourself a Christian. But am I clear? You could say, oh, I'm a Christian. I love God. Hallelujah. I go to church and worship every day. But when it goes to buy that fancy new car that you just got to have, but you ain't asked God, because he might want you to give it to someone in some country. Or a, there's a guy named Mark Brooks. <laughs> do not ever do that. I love my 2006 GMC pickup. <laughs> Perfect. I can park anywhere I want. They can scratch it. They can run into it. <laughs> Do anything they want. And I'm happy. <laughs> I let my kids drive it. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Just like, I had a fancy red Firebird convertible. Man, it was a sweet car, but every time it got a little scratch, I'm, oh man. So I'm just like, what did I get on that for? Oh, I'm talking about Judgment Day. <laughs> They'll never invite me back to this church. I've been in so many encounter services where a life has changed in a moment and it has nothing to do if you shake, rattle, or roll. It has to do with what is the fruit. You, you can leave that service and go, I don't know if anything happened. And the next day, you know something's different. You can think with your mind, nothing happened, but in your heart, you know that something touched you. You can, you can shake, rattle, and roll. It, some of you would know Hannah, who had that week-long encounter here. It's probably been two years now. Time flies. But... She, she must have been bouncing three feet off the ground. She, she's a different girl. I mean, that, she, she's a fire ball. Just fire. That's why we call this a fire meeting. Amen? I went too long. Let's go back into worship. Let's just worship him in spirit and truth. So spirit is, you, you are worshiping in spirit with your whole heart. The spirit is what? Your heart. It's not your mind. It is your heart. You talk about the heart and the, 
about the Spirit in the Bible. It has to do with your heart. The, the heart is the wellspring of life. And, and, and then Spirit and truth. And truth is nothing hidden. I come just as I am. Because the Lord knows how we are, right? Amen? And he says, that's who I'm looking for. See, that type of people there will change Tasmania. They will, people will, will want to come because they know they can find God there. And everyone, everyone was created in God's image. There is no separation. Do you know there's no separation from you and God ever? He is always face to face with you. It's only you who don't believe he is. Do you hear me? Are you hearing me? Romans 8. Romans 8.35, I believe it's 35. You'll find it right in there. It says, there is no separation from the love of God. Either height or death. Uh, and it's just a whole long list where there is no separation. But most Christians do not live a presence-focused life. Where where you, it's a practice. It doesn't come overnight. For five years, we would just lay around. And what did it feel like when he walked into the room? And then I got to practice it the last 25 years of, of trying every day through his grace and, and not ever, you know, those bad days when he feels a mile, miles away, learning how to deal with that. Like you learn, like it's really easy actually. It sound it felt hard at first, but eventually just learned. Oh, Papa, you feel like a long ways away right now. Would you come close? And he does every time because he is he is that good. He he's he's a person, so he must be encountered. You hear me? He's not an idea or a mist or that, even though he does come as a cloud sometimes. <laughs> and he comes as a fire, right? There's fire in the day. Cloud by night. No. I got to mix it up. But why not fire in the day? <laughs> <laughs> and... So let's all stand. And we're going to go into worship. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's just go back to where we were at the beginning. <laughs> and let... Now we have more instruction on what it is like when we come. Especially in a time where God is moving in the earth. <laughs>